Good morning, Life City Church. It's so good to be with you this week. And we just want to say a massive welcome. If you are new, if this is your second or third time, we are so excited for you to be with us here. Um, just a little reminder that we'll be having our Connect Lounge at the end of the service. So if you feel you want to come and just connect with us, have a chat, get to know us, uh, you are so welcome to do that. And there is a button uh, up on the top right saying connect with us, click on that button. And yeah, come have a chat in our Connect Lounge. We are so excited to meet you. Um, and yeah, I've just had such a good week. I don't know about you, but I've really felt like I've kind of got a bit more comfortable with lockdown. I kind of have got over my lockdown blues and now I'm feeling productive, ready to go. And we had an awesome session in Embers this week and we were really talking about searching our heart. How can we pray? And we've got this theme of prayer going on at the moment that I'm so excited about. Like, how can um, we open our hearts and open our prayer life to let God come in and work within us to get the best results and to, for us to be the best version of ourselves we can be through him. So I'm so excited and we're going to go into a time of worship. Uh, so let's get ready to praise. Let's get ready to worship. If you want to jump above your sofas, clap your hands, jump. Going down, thought it was for the count. Then I found your love. I had wandered off, thought I had gone too far. There I found your love. Here I used to know, can't stop me anymore. Cause I found your love. When I feel alone, I have a place to go.
challenges of this ongoing isolation um, has meant that I've had to be more intentional about my relationships, intentional about the things I do, intentional in adhering to my commitments and at the best of times I do find that quite challenging. Um, and if you're like me, 
I'll wake up one morning and I'll want to have a pyjama day where I'm completely um, demotivated, I have no inspiration, I get very little done. Or at the other extreme, I'm up, I'm full of energy, very motivated and I get everything done like a bull in a china shop and then I'm exhausted. And so for me, I want to be intentional about finding that balance, finding the right pace and being intentional about organizing the things that I need to get done. And so I started thinking about characters in the Bible and how they dealt with being intentional and being purposeful about the things that they wanted to accomplish. And I thought about Zacchaeus, who um, we know was a tax collector and he was quite wealthy. And his intent to see Jesus and what he did and how he, uh, the hurdles he had to go through in order for that to be possible. And in Luke chapter 19, verses two to five, it reads, a man was there named Zacchaeus, who was a very important tax collector. He was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but he was not able to because he was short and he couldn't see above the crowd. He ran ahead to a place where Jesus would come and he climbed a sycamore tree so he could see him. When Jesus came to that place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry, come down. I must stay at your house today. There are a few things that Zacchaeus had to do to make this possible. Um, first, he had to be organized. He decided, I'm going to run ahead of the crowd so I could um, be able to see Jesus. He also had to climb a tree because he was too short. And being a tax collector, he was quite hated. And so being in the crowd might not have been the best place for him. And so as Zacchaeus had gone through these um, these acts, these decisions he made in order to see Jesus. We see that he was very rewarded because Jesus noticed his intent and decided to meet with him. I think about other characters and the Bible is full of purposeful characters who are intentional about what they do. And I thought about the Good Samaritan and how he chose to make the sacrifice with his finances, his resources, his time and his efforts in being there for um, a man that was beaten up by robbers and thieves and left to die on the side of the road. And there were two other people that had gone before him, but they chose not to do anything. He was intentional in being there for someone. I also think about God himself, who I suppose is our ultimate example of being intentional and having purpose, um, how he gave up his life for us. I think about God's um, ability to create the world in six days and choosing to rest on the seventh day. And he was so intentional about us having a rest that he decided we should do the same as he did. And so as we are going through this particular season, I really want us to think about our intent, being intentional about the things that we want to achieve, being intentional about finding the time to spend with God, um, your devotional, that one-to-one -one time and setting aside these, um, these, these things that we need to do and making it our priority. I also want us to think about the Good Samaritan who made himself uncomfortable, almost an inconvenience where he sacrificed his resources to be there for somebody. And it doesn't have to be about finances. Sometimes it's just a text message or possibly a phone call, even, um, you know, just being there for someone, doing the shopping, whatever that might be. And finally, just being intentional about looking after ourselves, ensuring that we are finding the time to rest and we're not being too busy in this season and having structure, you know, our well-being is very important. Ensure that we are eating right, um, exercising, making healthy choices. You know, our body is a temple and Jesus did say he, you know, the Holy Spirit dwells in us and we are responsible for looking after this temple so we can be effective and in existing and in operating in our daily lives. And so I just wanted to pray briefly about or ability to be intentional in this season. So if you could just close your eyes with me. Father, I just thank you that you have given us wisdom and you have given us the ability to do the things that we need to do. And that Lord, we are sometimes crippled with fear or anxiety or confusion or just lack of experience. But I pray that you will just Give us the wisdom that we need to be intentional in everything that we do. 
to be reminded of the purpose for which we are here and to think about what we can do to be effective stewards today that we will not give up on our dreams in this season whether it's to write a book or to do a DIY job or to start that business or even just to reach out to a friend whether it's time to slow down in this season and just look after ourselves whatever it is that you would have us uh, be intentional in doing and I pray you will give us that ability to do so in Jesus name amen What a great encouragement from Venny there that we can take in our week, we can think about and we can challenge ourselves with. So people have been asking us, uh, when is church gonna return to normal? The lockdown's easing, shops are opening, we may even get a hairdresser in the coming weeks. But uh, what's happening with church? It's obviously a lather ga gathering and so it, there's all these kind of questions. And we just wanna let you know that we are staying up to date with the government advice and the government guidelines. We're not gonna do anything that could compromise your safety or the safety of, of our members. So, but we are, are looking at ways that we can um, make things happen um, within the guidelines. And so further information about that as new information comes out, uh, we will keep you up to date with and we will be looking for the best avenue available to make church resume to normal when it is safe to do so. So we just want to also say a big thank you. I know we've been pushing social media a lot, um, but we've seen lo loads of comments on our YouTube. We've seen our, our posts start to be shared a bit more and just thank you so much to everyone who is doing that. And if you feel like it and you know you haven't, uh, just leave a comment, share it with a friend, forward it to a family member. Uh, just anything you can do to share that content, we really appreciate and thank you so much for all of you that are doing that so far. A little note as well for some of you who are new or haven't been watching, if you want to keep up to date or get access to some of our messages or some of the new things that are going on, we have our LC app which you can download from the Apple Store or the Google Play Store and this is just uh, basically our church app where we have our messages, what's on, uh, where you're able to give if you want to, and you can really connect into the heart of the church. We just really wanna say a big thank you to all of the, you who have continued to give to Life City throughout the lockdown. We really appreciate that. And there'll be an, an opportunity on the screen in a moment for you to give if you would like to. And we're just gonna say a quick prayer over the offering. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much uh, that we can come and be part of your kingdom, that you have accepted us in as sons and daughters, and that you are holding us up and you are standing with us through every scenario. And we just thank you and we pray blessings for those who are giving their gift today. Um, we just love you so much, Jesus. Amen. Morning, Life City. Great to be with you. I just want to share a couple of prayer points that we can take to God together. You know, if people had strap lines, you know, those words under a brand name that give you the, encapsulate the essence of, of a company or organization. Esther's from the Bible would be born for such a time as this. The line was derived from a question put to her and um, in Esther chapter four, verse 14, and speaks of purpose intersecting with a season or a moment in time. I've been studying the prophets uh, men of God who had to speak, speak up for God in the most difficult of circumstances. But have you ever considered that it was in fact the difficult circumstances that gave birth to the men of God? Time after time we read of uh, such and such being prevalent at the time and God raised up a man or a woman of God after his own heart who would declare thus saith the Lord. Life City, you were born for such a time as this, for this season, with all its challenges, all its potential threats, and all its opportunities for the advancement of the kingdom. So let's pray into that, shall we? Father, we pray that we would not shrink back at this time. We recognize that this backdrop of a new normal and whatever that entails constitutes the ideal environment for your church to fulfill its assignment meaning men and women here in Life City and in the body of Christ at large, coming into a deeper understanding of their purpose and being strengthened with boldness to pursue both the outworking of that in their local church and also in industry, in commerce, in business, in politics, in medicine, and consider which, whatever your industries are. And that, Lord, um, we, we recognize this, this, this moment, this opportunity to be voices of influence that would expand the kingdom, that would impact lives. 
We thank you, Father. We lay hold of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, um, my second point. From, um, let's consider that today happens to be the celebration of Pentecost on the church calendar. This specific Sunday. Pentecost is about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's where our boldness comes from. That's where our timing, our eloquence, our everything that we are, the spontaneity, the impartation of power. But get this, it's also what ignites with uniqueness in God to create something explosive. At the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, they were heard, the disciples were heard speaking in other languages, in several languages. We often think of that being the baptism of the Holy Spirit and then people hearing those languages. But what if the uniqueness of those individuals allowed God to impart specific languages to groups of people? My point is that your uniqueness has a value in God and God takes a hold of that and does something special. So let's pray into that. Father, I thank you for the day of Pentecost over 2,000 years ago. I thank you for the continuous outpouring over the church of power, love, grace, wisdom, authority, equipping, influence. We thank you that we are here right now for such a time as this. We thank you for the journeys we all have and the journeys we've been walking in up to this point in time, both individually and as a corporate body. We give you permission, O oh God, to hijack our journeys, put our unique voices to work for you like the donkey at Passover, because the Lord had need of it, or like Stephen, who was translated to rendezvous with the Ethiopian eunuch. However you do it, Lord, we submit to you to be made effective in every aspect of our lives at this time of new normal, such that we can bring you glory. We magnify you, Father. We thank you. We submit Life City and every member and the wider church to you at this time. Have your way. Ignite in us something special that we would fulfill our assignment. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue praying into this time, church. It's a special one. Bless you. Morning, Life City. It's uh, great to be here. And what a great opportunity it is for us to come together this morning and to spend some time looking at the Word together. Uh, you'll notice, obviously, uh, Pastor Steve started us off with a, uh, a great sermon series last week, and I'm really pleased to be doing the second one. Um, pause to pray. Power, passion, and purpose. The power to pray. Just a quick recap on, on last week. What a great sermon that was to get us started in what is really important, which is to pray. Strengthen with power to pray bigger and more specific prayers. Prayers that are going to launch us into a new place. Coming from that assured knowledge and clear purpose. So I'm really pleased to be, um, be coming to the second one, which is a passion to pray. You know, it's really important to have that passion to pray. You know, I'm, I'm a fairly passionate person, uh, passionate in, in my prayer life, certainly, and I'm really passionate about Jesus. And I'm hoping this morning that this service is really going to be um, something that is going to launch you into maybe a new dimension of prayer, maybe a new uh, place of prayer. But I certainly want us to um, come together and have a passion to pray. So if we're looking at Paul's prayers, four prayers that Paul prayed. And mine is looking at a prayer that he prayed for Philemon, which we'll come to in a minute. I just wonder this morning, find yourself thinking, what are you thankful for this morning? You're thankful for your friends, you're thankful for your finance, you're thankful for your marriage, you're thankful for having a roof over your head. Thank you for the people around you. Now I've been really being challenged in the series we've been looking in our connect groups about being thankful. Um, I found myself having been persuaded to be thankful for creation, something that I don't really normally fit into, but I found a real challenge that actually God's created the universe and God's created some amazing things. Uh, so I'm really thankful and I've been pressing myself uh, to be thankful for those things. And we're going to look this morning at the second prayer, as I said, uh, where the Apostle Paul prays uh, and to be thankful for a friend called Philemon. Now Philemon was a wealthy Christian businessman and a friend of Paul's and we're going to look and what a great opportunity for us to look at what Paul prays for Philemon and I think we can take some encouragement, some challenge this morning on that. So let's um, read that verse. Philemon 4 
to 6. I thank my God, making mention of you always in my prayers, hearing of your love and faith which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you and in Christ Jesus. So firstly, the striking thing for me, as I've already said, is Paul prays a prayer of thankfulness for Philemon, his friend, his mate, his brother. I wonder who you are thankful for this morning. You know, we have got people around us we have a circle of friends, we have a, a close proximity of friends that we do life together with. Whether that's life that you've had over a series of time, certainly for myself, we've got friends in the church that we've known for 20, 30 years, and they are still very much part of our lives. And, you know, they bring encouragement, they bring challenge at the right time, they bring laughter, they give friendship, you know, that whole friendship. Or whether perhaps you're just starting on a friendship, but the important thing is to be thankful that we've got friends, right? And in Proverbs 27, 17, it says, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. So whether they're there to encourage, to motivate, see things that you don't see, a reminder of what you said, or maybe they're a, a, a challenge, a good friends can tell you um, some home truths that sometimes you don't wanna hear. I certainly know that um, I was facing a particular decision I had to make, and, and a very good friend um, said to me, Andy, you've been round this mountain long enough. You just need to make a decision. And that was a great bit of advice and a great um, challenge to me that moved me on to a next phase in our lives. You know, they're there to support. They're there to energise. They're there for us to uh, get really energised and really worked through and stirred up about things. You know, maybe it's, it's a why or why are you mad or what are you into um, to get that energy from people that we really feed off or again reminded that that iron sharpens iron and a friend sharpens a friend. So I wonder who's on your mind right now? You know, there's always a reason why people are on your mind. So I just want you to think about that this morning. Who is it that's dropped into your mind? Maybe you're having a shower this morning, maybe you're doing the washing up, maybe you're outside doing the car. Whatever you're doing, sometimes these thoughts come into my mind. That's the Holy Spirit, friends. And just as he's a friend, he's trying to remind you of people. And I certainly know for me, you know, there has been times when people have stood in the gap. And perhaps for us, we're having to stand in the gap. We're called to make intercession for them, laying down ourselves on behalf of them, just as Christ did. You know, and then there's a the power of agreement. Uh, you know, we're going through stuff. We all go through stuff, right? This is life. We go through stuff. But the great thing is, you don't have to go through it on your own. You've got people around you that you can phone up, you can text, you can WhatsApp, you can get in co uh, communication with them and say, look, I just really need some agreement on this. I need some agreement on my healing. I need some agreement on this job promotion. I need some agreement on my health. I need some agreement on my friendships or on my marriage. Whatever it is, that strong twofold cord that cannot easily be broken. Although sometimes it's just about comfort. It's just knowing that you can go to someone and someone can give you that comfort through the tough times and say, you're doing a great job, Andy. Keep going, press on, go through it, go, um, keep going. And, and just having that assurance, that understanding that someone's got your back and that assurance that's there. Made me think, you know, that's what Paul said of Philemon. And I wonder as he said, what would others be thankful in me or in you? What would it be people are saying about you or about me in this particular case? Paul was struck by Philemon's faith, as he says, and his love. There were two things that were really important to Philemon, uh, sorry, to Onesimus, and at Philemon's faith and his love. Consider just for a minute, what would your friends be thankful for in you? What are my friends thankful for, for in me? What would they be thanking God for this morning? You know, just as I said, I've been thankful for uh, the trees and the creation and all the uh, fantastic things around me that we've been able to enjoy, perhaps particularly more um, at this present time. But just think about for a minute, and there's a challenge here, isn't there? Are people going to be saying of us, oh, and his faith, and his love, 
and his passion and his prayer or his faith or his generosity, would people be saying, oh, Andy is known for his patience. Those of you who know me well probably think not. Um, it's not going to be patience, but maybe that is you. Maybe that is something. And actually, these virtues are what we are developing for the benefit of others, our friends. So the next thing is, uh, Paul talks about the sharing of your faith, that it will become effective. Now, we've heard that in giving thanks, you've given thanks in specifics, but he's now saying of Philemon, what is it that would become effective, that his faith would become effective? You know, the sharing of our faith is such a key principle for us. You know, God commanded us to go into all the world. So we know it's a real key. So we're just going to look at that a little bit more this morning and we're going to pray at the end for that in our lives. You know, why was that so important? Why of all the things did Paul pray for his friend that he would share his faith? Well, we're going to look at that a little bit in the time that we've got together. So one is, you know, it encourages you. When you share your faith, it encourages you, encourages you to go further, to think, oh, I can do this. I can actually share and have that interaction with someone. I know, you know, at times uh, when I'm at work um, or some friends, uh, and even sometimes just at the cash till, you know, I'm going through Tesco's at a distance, of course, um, but I'm able just to share something, something of my faith. And actually you feel out of, coming out of it, built up, you feel strengthened. And it can really spur you on also, that the sharing of your faith can really spur you on because you see it having an effect. You see it taking an effect in people's lives and that people really do come to a place where they are experiencing something of Christ. It also motivates others. So as we're sharing, there is a motivation. There's a motivation there for other people. And if he can do it through me, he can do it through you. And there's that concept, isn't there, of that cycle just continuing. And of course, what's fantastic is we have the family of God and it builds the Christian family. The Christian family is built up through the sharing of our faith. So if it's so important, if you're anything like me, you know, sometimes it's a struggle. So what is it? that stops us from sharing our faith. Why is it then that it's so important that we pray for others for the sharing of their faith? So I'm called to share my faith. I'm called to pray for others, my friends, that they would be effective in the sharing of their faith. So is it, let's just explore. I think often it's fear. What are others gonna think of me? What are others gonna think of me that I share my faith, my love for Christ. And, and therefore there's a disconnection often that we feel that we're gonna have with people. Actually, it's completely the reverse. Actually, there's an attachment. There, actually, there's a connection because people are drawn and are connected to Christ. I think sometimes it's a fear of failure. I certainly know, um, you know, I stepped out of the boat and we use that expression and I would say things and think, right, I'm going to get this person born again. I'm going to go all out. I'm going to speak to them. And you think you've got the right time. You think you've got the right moment. And it appears to fail. It appears to go nowhere. They don't fall down on their knees. They don't fall down on their knees and say, uh, and have that poor experience of salvation. And, and sometimes I've even had people rebuff me and say, oh, Andy, I, I just don't want to know. Just go away. Um, and, you know, that can stop us. That can stop us in our tracks but we need to keep praying for each other. And often, um, sometimes it's just about busyness. You know, we're busy, we're busy people. We get preoccupied. I don't think that it's, it's necessarily something that we're not um, hungry for. We just get busy. We just become, perhaps other things take over. You know, I've got to get the kids, pick them up here. I've got to go and get the shopping. I've got to do this, I've got to do that. I've got to be on time tomorrow. Oh, I've got a, a Zoom meeting now that I've got to go to and, and, and be sure I, I, I make sure that I'm part of that. So busyness can just take over. It's something that just controls our life. Well, you know, hopefully by praying for each other this morning, we can make that become a little bit more balanced. And then lastly, we've disinclined. We've tried it before. So why were we going to try it again? So I just want to encourage us this morning about ways to share our faith, ways to really encourage us this morning to continue to step out, to know what it is we can pray just as Paul did for his friends. 
So we can pray these things. We can pray, you know, one of the most important things for me, I think I've tried to live my life for, is the verse that is reminded about showing yourself as light, being as light, being as salt in life. You know, someone once said to me, you know, Andy, your life is the only Bible people are ever going to see. Wow, what a truth. And it, and it really did impact my life. And I thought, yeah, you know, that's good. The Bible isn't always commonly read, it isn't commonly to hand. So actually, we have a commission, we, we have a, a real importance that we need to be people that can demonstrate Christ in our lives, that they can see that in their lives. Secondly, we can share our testimony, we can share our story. You know, why did you come to Christ? Well, for me, um, it, it was actually the love of young people in, in a group, the love they have for one another, something that as a 14 year old I hadn't really seen the love they have for one another such a real tangible thing they call each other up they look out for each other some of the things that we've been talking about this morning but at the part in my life I hadn't seen that you know that disconnection that often goes on in teenage years and for me to see a love that was so real for each other that was what was shared and that was what made me come to Christ and for others of you you'll have a different story you have a different story where you reached out to Christ, became a, a follower of Christ. And that's a story that can have a connection. You know, the blind man in John 9 said, I, I do know one thing. I was blind, but now I can see. What a story. Now, maybe you are someone who's listening this morning and you're blind and now you can see because people are prayed. It's not my story, but each of our stories is personal and says something about God's character. You know, we can invite people to come to church. We can invite people in this day and age through social media to, uh, to listen to church and join us together. What a great opportunity that is, that we can bring people in. You know, John met a woman at a well, the woman of Samaria. She went away having had an encounter with Christ and her immediate response was going back to her city and saying, hey, hey, come and see a man, meet a man that told me things about my life only he would know and no one else. And that impacted the city. Maybe your story this morning will impact your school, will impact your, uh, your college, will impact your family. Yet yeah, we are called to share our faith. And that's something I just wanna um, focus on this morning. I wanna pray, as I said, I wanna pray for us, just as Paul prayed for his friend. I want us to pray this morning. So you join me as I pray for us all in the ability to share our faith. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to come together this morning, that through your word, you would have challenged us to be encouraging one another to share our faith, that we would pray for our friends, that they will be effective in the sharing of our faith, that Father, that we also would be really accepting of other people, Father, that we would be generous that we would be people that are patient, we would be people that are kind, and they would be the virtues that other people see in us. Father, I pray that there would just be such a passion for prayer, a passion for praying for others to share their faith, and that we would see miraculous interventions in people's lives, Father, as they listen to this message in Jesus' name. Amen. And then secondly, there's a group of people, and we've been talking about being a follower of Christ. That's someone that has realised that they need to have a friend in Christ, to follow Christ. Lots of people uh, will be listening to this and lots of people, obviously in Life City, um, have shared their faith and have accepted Christ as their saviour. And one of the things we're, we would love you to do if you're looking in and um, hearing for the first time, we'd really encourage you to um, just raise your hand. There's a button on the link that you can just raise your hand and that's something that we call salvation. That's a call to salvation. That's an, an opportunity, a decision that you can make this morning to say, hi, yeah, I want to uh, give my life to Christ. I want to become a follower of Jesus. You know, the passion at which we heard about this morning, the acceptance for me is something that you want. And if that is you, we just want you to repeat this prayer after me. So let's, let's repeat this prayer. Father God, I ask for your forgiveness for all the bad things that I have done. I decide this morning to follow you. 
I give my life to you as I confess you as my Lord and as my Saviour. I will follow you for the rest of my days. Amen. Amen. Well, if you prayed this for the first time, we would love you to connect with us. There's an opportunity to join the uh, Connect Lounge just by clicking on the link that you'll see um, on the screen and we will be able to chat to you more there so you can find out a little bit more about what it is to be a follower of Christ. But we thank you for joining us. We thank you for the opportunity to come together and to um, share in what is Life City. Thank you for listening. Have a great week. What an awesome message. I hope that that blessed you this week. Let's go out with a song. What a great time we've had together this morning. Such a challenging and down-to-earth message from Andy that really allows us to focus and challenge our prayer life. I love that we're kind of focusing in on our prayer life as a church. It's so important to be able to connect with God and 
have that time to ruminate on his word and connecting your prayer life with reading your Bible is really where you can pray about what's going on in your life and reading the word is getting that thing. We can sometimes think, oh, I don't feel anything. I can't hear anything from God. But we have it right there in our Bible, what God wants to say to us. And you'll find as you pray more and you pray these uh, passionate, more active prayers where they're specific, bigger, and where you're passionate about it, that when you uh, pair it with reading your Bible, you'll really hear what God is trying to say to you. Don't forget we have our connect groups running and if you raised your hand um, or you're new, don't forget the connect lounge will be on right now. So connect, click on that connect with us button. Have a great week and we'll see you again at 10.15 for the in-service chat. Have a great week.